everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 4 of tutorial series on AWS Glue. In this video, I will cover AWS Glue ETL. But before we go ahead, I am assuming that you have already watched the part 3 video of this tutorial series. And if not, then I would recommend you to go through it first. So here in this video, we will start with few slides followed by the hands-on of AWS Glue ETL. So let's understand what is AWS Glue ETL. But before that, let's see what ETL is. So ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. So ETL is the set of processes to move data from source to destination or from point Y to point Z with some transformation. Now let's understand Extract, Transform and Load in one line each. So extraction is the process of fetching data from different sources. Transformation is the process to perform various operations on data. Loading is the process of inserting the transform data into the target storage. Now when the extract, transform and load processes work together to move data from point Y to point Z, it is called an ETL job. So AWS Glue ETL is the tool available under Glue Studio, which is a part of the overall AWS Glue ecosystem to move data from source to destination with some transformation. So that's a high level definition of what exactly is AWS Glue ETL. Now here uh, you might ask, is Glue ETL a replacement of EMR? And the answer is no. So when should I use Glue ETL versus EMR? So let's find out with few points. So AWS Glue ETL is suitable for ad hoc data processing jobs, whereas Amazon EMR is suitable for large scale data processing jobs. AWS Glue ETL is good for jobs uh, which takes minutes to couple of hours to complete, whereas EMR is well suited for jobs that could take days to complete. Glue ETL is serverless and there is no burden of managing infrastructure, so it is easy to get started with. On the other hand, EMR adds the burden of management and it is well suited when the use case requires fine-grained control over the memory. In terms of resources, Glue ETL is limited to 8B CPU and 32 GB of RAM. So if the job requires more resources, then EMR is the way to go. And finally, AWS Glue ETL is for simpler workflows with flexible infrastructure requirements. And if there is a fixed infrastructure requirements, then Amazon EMR is an option to go with. But in the end, everything boils down to the requirements and based on that, the decision has to be made. So this was the few data points to differentiate between AWS Glue ETL and Amazon EMR and when we can use AWS Glue ETL versus EMR. Now let's understand how we can access Glue ETL. We can access Glue ETL via console, which is something we will do in some time. Another option is that you can write the ETL scripts locally and upload them to Glue Studio as a zip file. And the advanced option is via Glue development endpoints. Now, as a next step, let's see what we are going to do as a part of the hands-on. So in the previous video, this is what we have implemented. We created the folder structure in S3, created the database, and finally created the crawler to populate or create the CSV underscore reports table, which contains the schema information of the data. Now, we want to take a step further to transform the same data and then store the transform data in Apache Parquet format. Now to do that, first we should have information about the data source and data target. Now here we know the data source, which is the AWS Glue data catalog, but what about the data target? It means where we want to store the data after transformation. So it's going to be the S3. So as a first step, we will create the folder structure for the data target in S3 followed by the creation of an ETL job. And once the data is transformed and loaded into the S3 via ETL job, we will create the crawler to populate the table definition of the target data. So in the nutshell, we will create the ETL job to pull, transform and load the data in Apache Pocket format. And then we will also populate the table definition for the target data via crawler. So now I hope you have a clear idea about the implementation and what we are going to do as a part of the hands-on. Okay, 
So now it's time to switch to the AWS Management Console. So join me there. Now, once you are within AWS Management Console, let's open the resources that we have created in the previous video. So first of all, let me open S3. Now in the previous section or previous video, we have created this bucket that is AWS Glue Data Catalog Demo. And here we have some uh, directory structure uh, that we have created. Now, since we are going to write the ETL job to transform the data into Apache Pocket format and load the transform data into Amazon S3 bucket. So that is why we are going to create the folder structure. So let's create a folder. We will say target data. Now within this target data, we will create another folder with the name customer data. Now within this customer data, we will create one more folder that is Pocket reports. Okay, so here we will say create folder. Now here we have successfully created the output directory structure. So now when we go ahead and write the ETL job, we are going to store the Apache Pocket format data into this folder that is Pocket underscore reports. Now as a next step, we want to create the ETL job to transform the data into Apache Pocket format and store it within this folder. So to create the ETL job, we will navigate to AWS Glue console. So navigate to AWS Glue console and then click on jobs under AWS Glue Studio from the left panel and this will open a new tab. Now once you are within Glue Studio, here we have got couple of options to create the ETL job. The first one is visual with source and target. So if you select this, then from here you can select your source. That means the data source and then over here you can select the target that where you want to load the data or where you want to store the data after the transformation. So this is visual with source and target. Another option is visual with blank canvas. So when you select this, you don't get that drop down to select the source and target, but you can configure it later on after you click on this create button. The third option is you can create or write the spark script. Okay, so here we have got two options. So either you can create a new script with boilerplate code or you can write your script locally and upload it over here and then click on create. Same for Python shell script editor. You can create a script with boilerplate code or you can write it locally and upload it over here. And then if you want to move on with the Jupyter notebook, then you can select this option as well. But as a part of this video, we will select the second option that is visual with blank canvas. So select this and click on create. So this is how the blank canvas looks like and the dotted area that you see is your blank canvas. Okay. Now within this canvas, we have to configure ETL components. So first we need to define the source that from where or what is the source of the data. So click on source and select your uh, appropriate source. In my case, it's AWS Glue data catalog. But in your case, if you are, if your requirements is different, then you might have different data source. But as a part of this video, we will select AWS Glue data catalog. And as soon as you select that, you will get this node on this blank canvas. Okay. So you have to select this node and on the right side, it will reflect all the properties of that particular node. So here we have the node properties. So you can change the name and you can also change the node type. And then you need to define or configure the data source properties. So here, since we have selected AWS Glue data catalog, so we have to select the database. So in my case, it's customer underscore data, which is something that we have created in the previous video. And within that database, I have this table that is CSV underscore reports. And then you can click on output schema to have a look at that. With data preview option, you can see a transform sample of your data at each node, but this is out of scope for this video. So we are not going to touch that. So now the source is configured successfully. Now we want to transform that data. So click on actions. Here is a list of various transformation that you can apply to your data depending on the requirements. And for the purpose of this video, I will select the first option that is chain schema mapping. So select that and here you will see another node. And then on the right side, the relevant properties will be reflected. So here we have the node properties and then the transformation. So if you want to change, for example, data type or the column name that all the mappings you can apply over here. 
So for example, customer ID, I want to change the data type from long to print. And then I also want to change the column name that is annual underscore income underscore in dollars, for example. And then I want to change the data type of the age from long to int. Same for this column, I will say big integer. And let's say I also want to change the spending score data type from long to big int. Okay. Now, if you want to have a look at the preview of how your output schema would look like, then you can click on this tab. And this is how your output schema would look like after transformation. And finally, again, we have the data preview. Okay. Now we have selected the source. We have configured the source. We have selected and configured the transformation that we want to apply. Now we want to load that transform data somewhere into the destination. Okay. So for that, you need to click on this target dropdown and you need to select appropriate uh, data target. So in my case, I want to load this transform data into Amazon S3. So I'm going to select that. But in your case, based on your requirements, it could be different. Now here we have the third node. So same, it has the node properties and its relevant uh, configuration is reflected over here. Now here we can select the format in which we want to store the transform data. So I want to store it in the pocket format. Compression type, as of now, I will move on with uncompressed. And then we need to configure the target location in which location we want to store this transform data. So we will click on browse S3 and we will look for the bucket in which we have created the directories in the first tab. So in my case, it's AWS Glue data catalog demo. And within that, I want to store the data into the target data folder, customer underscore data. And within that folder, I want to store the packet file into the packet underscore reports folder. So select that. So now here uh, we have successfully configured the source, the transformation that we want to apply and where we want to load the data after transformation. Okay. So you can click on this output schema to have a look at it. And again, here we have the data preview. Okay. Now, once you are done with this configuration, you can click on script. So the script will be auto generated for us. It will be generated by AWS Glue. So you can have a, a look at this. So here we can see that the source of our data, right? That is customer underscore data database. And within that we have the CSV underscore reports. So, so that's our data source. And over here, the transformation is taking place. And finally, the data is being loaded into the target S3 location. Okay, so this is all the script is doing. It also allows you to download the script. So you can click on the download script button on the top right corner. And similarly, if you want to edit the script, then you can click on the edit script button on the top right corner. And then once you're done with this, click on job details. Here you need to define the job name. So I will say CSV to packet. Add the description if you want, that's optional. Then select the IAM role with appropriate permissions that allow this ETL job to read the data from source and write the data to destination. Here I am going to select the IAM role that I have created in the previous video, which has all the necessary permission. Now uh, the type is Spark Glue version. It's Glue 3.0 language is Python worker type. So there are two worker types available. One is G1X and G2X. So we will go ahead with G1X. Okay, if you want to automatically scale the number of workers, then you can check this requested number of workers, we will say two. Okay, if you want to generate the job insights, you can check this, I will uncheck this for now. Then we have job bookmark. So job bookmark helps Glue to maintain state information of the ETL job. Then we have number of retries. So do you want to retry if this ETL job fails? If yes, then how many times? So you have to specify the number there. And then uh, here we have the advanced properties, right? So you can configure this location for your script path, for your UI logs path and the temporary path. Okay, so right now we are not going to configure anything. Now, once you're done with this configuration, you can click on save. Now here we have successfully created the ETL job. Now it's time to run this job. So click on run. And as soon as you click on run, you can click on this runs tab to have a look at the 
status of your job which is running and here uh, within cloudwatch logs you should be able to see all your logs or the output logs or the error logs specifically so now we will wait for some time for this job to complete so now as you can see the status of the run is succeeded that means the job has been executed successfully now let's go to our s3 bucket in the target location and have a look at the file that has been created so as you can see the pocket file has been created or loaded into this folder so here we have successfully transformed the, the data into the apache pocket format and we had successfully stored that transform data into this s3 location okay now as a next step we will create a crawler and we will populate another table for this pocket data so let's go back to the aws glue console click on crawlers click on create crawler give the crawler name i will say pocket customer data crawl click on next add a data source here the data source is s3 click on browse look for the bucket so in my case it's aws glue data catalog demo and within this i have this target data folder within that i have customer underscore data and within customer underscore data i have this pocket underscore reports folder okay so that is my uh, data source so i'm going to select that and click on choose and make sure to add forward slash at the end of the s3 path and once you have configured this click on add an s3 data source click on next choose the iam role to provide appropriate permission so in my case it's aws glue data catalog crawler leave rest of the option as it is click on next choose the database in which we want to populate this table so in my case it's customer underscore data and if you want to add some prefix to the table then you can do that so i will simply say pocket underscore whatever the table name is and then click on next review the configuration click on create crawler now the crawler is in ready state and it's ready to run so check this and click on run so now the crawler is in running state so now let's wait for this crawler to complete now as you can see the crawler has ran successfully and now it is in stopping state and if we look at the table changes from last run it says that one table is created now let's have a look at that table so click on databases open the database so in my case it's customer underscore data and within this database i have two tables which is csv underscore reports and another is pocket underscore pocket underscore reports so if i click on that then i should be able to see the schema partitions if any indexes if any and then you can have a look at the advanced properties to to understand or to learn about the metadata okay so here we have successfully populated the table for our transform data as well so why we have did this because in the next video we are going to use athena to query both the csv underscore reports table and the parquet underscore reports table so guys that's all i wanted to cover as a part of this video i hope you find this helpful and till that time if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time